Well, after yet another debacle in terms of the US presidential election when it comes to polling, I can understand why trust and faith in polling is an all-time low. And I certainly think the polling firms have big questions to answer about how they keep getting it consistently wrong. But the latest YouGov poll does have some interesting findings in terms of British politics that I want to bring you, including bombshell uh, findings that show the Brexit party support edging up to a level we haven't seen for a while off the back of Nigel Farage's announcement that the Brexit party would effectively be relaunching as Reform UK. Before I get into all of this, guys, please hit the subscribe button and the bell so you don't miss future reports. There are a few thousand of you, by the way, who have clicked uh, the subscribe button and the bell who haven't turned on notifications in the YouTube app itself or on your phone. That's why you won't be receiving notifications, just to let you know. Now, let's get into this. So Patrick O'Flynn, political commentator Patrick O'Flynn, who's previously been on this channel, uh, highlighted this poll saying big news to the Brexit party with no publicity, uh, no prompt, and despite being an almost redundant brand, is on 6% in the new YouGov poll. If Farage slash Tice get Reform UK listed by the end of the month, I'm betting, O'Flynn says, that they will debut with a 10% and go up from there. Tories heading for 30 Percent. Now, I know some of you instantly will say, Michael, this doesn't matter. We haven't got a general election for years and years. Well, it does matter. There's a whole host of elections, a bumper set of elections set for May 2021. I'm going to get onto that in a bit, but I want to go through the specifics in the poll. So YouGov previously had the Labour Party and the Conservative Party level at 38% apiece. This latest poll out today has Labour leading with a five-point lead on 40%, with the Conservatives on 35%, the Lib Dems on 6%, and the Brexit Party at 6% nationally for Westminster, a level that I've not seen for a while. Let me know in the comments if you've seen anything like that in recent times. I haven't. So 6% nationally. And really, that's from a standing start with a party that hasn't been that active, and we're off the back of uh, pretty much a, a relaunch announcement and an, and an article here or there from Richard Tice and Nigel Farage. Now, when you go into these figures, what you find is quite interesting. 7% of those who voted, 2019, uh, voted in 2019 for the Conservative Party have switched now to the Brexit Party. 12% of Leavers are now saying that they're uh, back in Nigel Farage's outfit. 10% of 18 to 24-year-olds, double digits of 18 to 24-year-olds. Now, is this uh, off the back of the anti-lockdown message now going out from Nigel Farage and Richard Tice. But we'll have to wait and see. But I would point out, in the fairness, in terms of accuracy, the, the sample size of 18 to 24-year-olds is only 174. So, you know, I wouldn't take that as gospel. Nevertheless, it's an interesting finding within the survey. The Brexit Party also are 9% with working class voters overall, which makes it the third most popular party with what is classified in, in polling jargon as C2DE, uh, i.e. working class voters, the Brexit party now on 9% with working class voters. Now, overall, 56% of Leave voters, those who voted Leave in 2016, according to the SUGOV poll, are still supporting the Conservative Party. And of course, we will wait to see what Boris Johnson actually delivers. We've seen statements that have been quite encouraging from Lord Frost all the way through. But Boris Johnson set out very clearly, of course, and I keep reiterating it, that 15th of October deadline couldn't have been clearer. If we don't have a deal with the EU by then, we're walking away, we're going no deal, we're going clean break, which is what I know you guys in the comments that watch this channel really are in favour of. Yeah, that 15th of October has come and gone and negotiations are rumbling on seemingly with no end in sight. So I think in terms of that 56% of Lever support for Boris Johnson, the Conservative Party that remains, it will be interesting to see what happens to that depend on on uh, what the British government do in terms of the Brexit negotiations. And of course, that will be coming to a head soon, the transition period ending the end of this year. Just to remind you, this isn't a, a one-off poll showing uh, uh, this level of support for the Brexit party. There was recently a Welsh barometer uh, poll that I've highlighted previously that had the party on 5%. So I think it's fair to say the party now looking at 5 6%, which again, uh, for, for a party that hasn't been fully campaigning, and that has just effectively announced a relaunch and rebrand, shows you uh, that level of public support. Shows you that the Conservative Party cannot take uh, Brexiteer support for granted. Now, Nigel Farage tweeted recently, 
get hashtag lockdown lies trending. We know that lockdown, anti-lockdown, uh, a, a, a sort of minority position in the polls, but one that is certainly growing uh, in terms of being against uh, lockdown. And we saw a sort of a fairly small conservative parliamentary rebellion in that vote on the new lockdown. But Nigel, linking to a story from The Telegraph, front page story, uh, official projections which pushed the country into a second lockdown have been quietly revised to no longer su suggest deaths could soon overtake those at the peak of the first wave The Telegraph has learned. And the party also putting out uh, this graphic that shows you uh, basically pushing the message lockdown isn't work. Now I did ask, and I'll say it again, I, I mentioned at the start, why this is all important is because there are a huge number of elections next year. Everything from the Scottish Parliament to the Welsh Parliament to the London Assembly to the London mayoral race, a huge number of local elections and also the police and crime commissioner elections. So this idea that none of this matters because there's years and years until the next election is not true. There's a lot of elections in May. Now I did ask uh, some of my supporters and guys do please support Real News by hitting that join button down there. Would really appreciate your support. It's £5 a month. Uh, I asked some of my supporters uh, on a poll, did they think the lockdown was the right thing or the wrong thing to do? And the findings from my supporters here on the channel are uh, pretty, pretty stark. 100% voting that it was the wrong thing to do. Here were some of the specific comments. Uh, John saying, and John, thanks for your support. Thanks for supporting the channel. The government's job is, is to weigh all relevant factors, he says, and reach the correct overall balanced solution. But they have allowed themselves to give too much importance to only one input while ignoring the other very important considerations, general health, mental well-being, future prospects of, for the young, and of course, the economic consequences. And Darren, Darren, thanks a lot for your support, saying, I think it's crazy. We need to live with it, be sensible at all times. I'm an uh, H&S consultant and go to hundreds of places and I have a health condition. I just take a precaution mask and hand wash. We, we need to just carry on. And guys, if you do become a supporter and, and comment in the support posts, I'm going to keep highlighting what my supporters uh, what you guys think, those of you that have clicked the join button of supporting this channel. But in terms of that overall poll, guys, let me know what you think. And I keep asking it, but I really am interested. Is the Re Brexit party or soon to be Reform UK a party that you're looking at, a party that you would support, a party that you would get involved with? Or are you keeping the faith? Are you still backing Boris Johnson? Uh, let me know in the comments, guys, what you plan to do, where your support lies, what you make of uh, the government's stance on lockdown and on Brexit. Very keen to hear from you in the comments. And of course, as ever, thank you very much for watching.